Um, I'd just like to say you know, welcome to Jean-Marc and thank you to, to the other researchers and academics who've joined us this morning. Uh, my name's Charlie, Dr. Charlie Mansfield, the outgoing uh, research lead for the JPN lab. And uh, Zoe, who's joined us today, Zoe Roberts, is, uh, is now in charge of running these. And over the next month, she'll let you know um, her new, um, I suppose, catalogue or um, calendar of, of the other talks that she's going to run. We normally try and manage about four research talks per year. And this is the first one of the, John Marks is the first one of the 21-22 series. I'm um, trying to record them all and also hang on to people's uh, slides if they send them to us. And I'm storing, or we, we're storing all them in MS Teams. So you can go back and look at these um, uh, if you need to follow up references um, or if you haven't taken any notes and you want to follow them up. And usually I've found that people um, who've joined in and given talks, uh, Yasna very kindly gave us a talk at the end of last year, is that they're quite happy to uh, receive follow-up emails about their research because it's usually research that they're still live and still interested in doing. John Mark is from the uh, ESO laboratory, uh, ESO, which is Espas and Societe, or Spaces and Societies Lab, and it's housed at the University of Caen, which is, I was explaining in a moment before, it's uh, it's nearly uh, a ferry port. It's about 15 or 20 kilometres inland from Wiestraham, one of the French ferry ports that's used a lot by English holidaymakers, and that is why I, I discovered it. Um, uh, Philip and uh, Derek and I had done a piece on Cherbourg, and I became really interested in what we were trying to do is how we understand urban space for, for British holidaymakers going abroad and how we can, um, with literary travel writing, we can make that space more interesting. And so I started to explore the other cities along the coast of Normandy, Brittany, and, and, and up into, I suppose that's still Normandy, on that piece that goes like that, uh, where La Havre is, and La Havre is still Normandy. And if anything has been written about those spaces, or if we can do a deep mapping of those urban spaces to find out ways of encouraging the English holidaymaker outbound not to take their car with them. So to go by ferry, but not take a car, mm -hmm. or go by Eurostar and not take the car and not, and not add to the carbon problem in, uh, in Normandy and Northern France. Um, and that's where I discovered the ESO lab. And in particular, the work one, one aspect of Jean-Marc's work that I was interested in is the way that he conceived or our particular subculture conceived as, of an urban space in the city of Caen. And so that's probably the best time to hand over to Jean-Marc and, and uh, invite him to speak about that particular piece of work that he did. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Charlie, for inviting me to this uh, seminar. And I am very happy to uh, speak with uh, Plymouth University and researcher. And um, I um, the, the 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 main the research I will um, uh, my research today is about uh, LGBT people in Caen, and um, I will try to share my screen now. So, so can you see my screen? Yes, that's yes. really clear. So um, we decided two years ago to have an atlas online because we had many information about our city in uh, scientific article, in books, in uh, PhD thesis, in uh, reports, and all the information was in many places and uh, there was no um, information about our research work on the city uh, available to the public. We think that today uh, it's important to share uh, university information for uh, uh, citizens and people uh, outside of the university. And uh, the Atlas Online is a good way uh, to make uh, maps uh, available to uh, more people. And um, the maps, uh, we think that maps are today 
synthesis of uh, uh, data and um, it's important um, for uh, people of university to communicate uh, their, their result of, of research. And so uh, two years ago, we decided to have an atlas online and to have small text uh, with different topics, uh, economics, uh, transports, um, 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 education, and, um, and one of the, of the topic is uh, LGBT people. It's just one, uh, one, uh, one part. Uh, we have um, 110 uh, different texts and LGBT is just one of these uh, 110 texts. So I, um, we made a map of LGBT uh, in Caen. So can you see the, can you see my map? Yes, that's yes. Clear. okay. So uh, Caen is a, is a city, uh, Caen itself is 100,000 people, but if we consider uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the spaces around, it's uh, 200,000 people. And if we consider all people that are coming to work or to study or to uh, do shopping, uh, it's uh, more that it's like uh, 400,000 people. And um, so the, the city center is very small. And uh, on this map, I tried to uh, put all LGBT uh, spaces um, um, uh, from well today and in the past. It say uh, LGBT spaces now are and in the past, because um, in 1982, um, uh, um, homosexuality was not a crime anymore in France, and the police stopped uh, having uh, records on um, LGBT people. So, and, and at this uh, time, uh, um, associations started to exist officially, LGBT uh, associations. And I have, um, so I, I have key questions for this uh, presentation and uh, maybe, maybe too much questions, uh, sorry about that. But, um, and so, uh, my first question is why mapping social groups is important today and why an atlas online is a good way to make available geographical data for the public. Um, uh, the question, why studying LGBT plus spaces in a medium sized city like Normandy, and three, how far is the university involved in gender studies and, and geographers? And for what is social geography's uh, research school in France and feminism and I've lost audio. Can everyone else hear? No, I've lost it too. Same here, just um, it seems to be a fro frozen the audio at least. Yeah, I can't hear either. I found, Charlie, with my online lectures, if you turn off video, so maybe if we were to turn off video, that might improve the bandwidth. Oh, great. Thanks, Zoe. I'll do that then. Oh, it looks like we've lost John Mark completely. <laughs> He's gone. He's done a runner. He's had yeah. enough. That was enough <laughs> today. Is he? Uh... Hmm. Charlie, can you call him or anything to see if he's still there? There he is. 
Hello. Ah. Yeah. Hi there. We, we've all switched off for video now to try and again give a bit better bandwidth. Do you want me to cap, get my video? Uh, that, that's a thought, and then but but still still present, um, and so so uh, uh, still give your talk, and then uh, in about five or ten minutes time, switch on the video again, and it may have stabilized. Can I just ask a question, Jean-Marc? Qu'est-ce qui se passe là-bas? Vous, vous avez, ils ont coupé l'internet là-bas ou non Non, non. Parce que vous avez disparu de le, de le Zoom. Oui, 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 ça y est, je suis revenu. Oui, d'accord, ok. Parce que ce matin, ici, en Angleterre, il avait des problèmes avant quand même, oui. D'accord. Um, so, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yes, that is really clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, I'm. I will share again my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, very clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, the end of my question. Uh, I think I was question uh, nine. Uh, could we say that LGBT plus spaces are more related with commerce and LGBT places more related with activism or non-profit association? And the following question is uh, why the annual pride is getting more and more important? Is there a gay village or a gay neighborhood like in the Western big cities? Is there a LGBT plus community? And um, can, so can social networks or sites online play today the role of LGBT places played in the past? And uh, what are the relations between LGBT people and social classes and generations? And last question, do gay people, lesbian people, B people, trans people, etc., have separate spaces or mixed spaces and why? So um, uh, it's, I think uh, the map uh, you can see is the first map of Caen um, explaining uh, LGBT uh, places and spaces. And I, uh, as, as a gay uh, and a gay activist, I have a relation with the um, association for uh, 30 years. So it was, um, I know many places because I've been there and I know uh, many people and there is today a LGBT center and I contacted uh, the director and I spoke with people there. And I uh, also spoke with different generation of people because I, I had no idea of what was going on in 1982 when um, homosexuality was not anymore a crime and police stopped uh, having their file on uh, LGBT people. So I interviewed uh, people that in the 80s uh, played uh, a role in, in uh, activism and they had um, uh, like a bar uh, in, uh, in, a, in a small street in the center of Caen. There was also a feminist restaurant and, um, and it was uh, very, uh, they had to hide and it was uh, uh, really a, a clandestinity. And uh, so this work is to uh, remind uh, young people and especially my students that are, that are uh, uh, now uh, 18 or 20 that um, the, in the past, uh, uh, people in Caen had, had to hide, uh, to meet, uh, to know themselves and uh, to, um, uh, to, um, to develop, um, to, to fight for their rights. Um, so, um, 
this um, um, looking in the past and the history is really very important uh, to understand how uh, these um, um, spaces have changed. Um, in the um, 90s, uh, the um, appeared uh, um, commerce and uh, bars and um, uh, discotheque and uh, um, also saunas and uh, and um, it were they they were more and more uh, visible in the in the streets. They were not uh, uh, in the, uh, in the backyards, but they started to be in in the front of the streets, in the high streets, and um, then started the uh, the prides. And that was a car is is uh, a, a medium sized city in France, and I think that um, many LGBT people uh, are uh, mo moved in the past from from Normandy to Paris because we are so near Paris that many people moved from Normandy to to Paris. Uh, the the um, um, uh, the uh, religion and the uh, Catholicism uh, was very, is very strong in west of, of France and uh, in Normandy, and it was uh, complicated for gay people to to stay in Caen or in Normandy. So many people moved to to Paris. Um, so um, in 1999, the France uh, had a new law uh, allowing um, um, and um, it's not the marriage, but it's um, it's uh, the 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 wedding was possible in uh, two thousand and and thirteen, but in nineteen ninety nine, it was uh, a civil uh, partnership, and um, and it was uh, there were more uh, uh, commerce and um, more freedom in car. And uh, the press started to speak about the the prides. The every year in uh, June there is a, a pride with uh, old people uh, coming in the streets. And um, last year there were uh, three thousand people, and uh, mainly young people, people that uh, were uh, fifteen, eighteen, or 25, and that was the majority of the people. So, um, as a geographer, um, I try to understand why some um, places are, have disappeared, um, some uh, bars or saunas or uh, nightclubs have disappeared. Uh, because the, the clients um, have stopped going there, and that's um, all the um, commercial places are, I think, uh, like that. They, they have uh, ups and downs. And I can say the same with uh, association uh, that um, existed and have not disappeared, and new associations uh, are now. Uh, uh, in Caen or in Normandy. Now, the big uh, shift is uh, the, the social networks and um, online science, sites um, and uh, uh, LGBT people as a minority can exchange uh, uh, on the internet or uh, and uh, my question was, um, does that mean that uh, places, uh, or real places will, will uh, um, uh, spaces, sorry, will, will disappear? And um, I found out that uh, no, people still need to meet uh, for real. 
uh, but it has a big change in the geography. The number of, of uh, spaces are less important today that, uh, than uh, 20 years ago. Um, and, um, but uh, uh, spaces are, are still existing. Um, is that clear? Can you hear me? Yes, that's really, really well presented, really clear. Thank you. Okay. That was also uh, my question. You've just you've just answered my question about what what social media was actually doing, what impact it would have on those spaces. So that's really interesting. Thank you. Well, yeah, I think from this point of view that there are different uh, generation of of uh, LGBT people. Uh, the the people uh, LGBT people that are now uh, fifteen years or though they are. Uh, 30 or though they are, uh, 60 are very different and they communicate uh, in different ways and um, I think they they have uh, um, a relation with uh, places that is different. Um, I could say uh, that uh, as well that um, in the in the 80s, uh, there was not a, a community, but um, as a, um, a, a minority, they were more. Um, they how to say that they had a real places. When I I use the the word uh, places, I I could say uh, in French is uh, territory. Uh, a territory is is a place where there is a strong uh, relation, and um, and it's it's uh, it's um, it's a very uh, very important for uh, LGBT people to fight uh, to develop their rights and to have uh, the law uh, changed. And when I use space, it's more neutral. It's more um, a commerce and uh, a bar, and um, it can uh, last uh, ten years, and then the bar is 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 not uh, working anymore. But I think that um, LGBT people had places, I mean, real uh, territories and spaces that were um, less important for them and uh, that had uh, less uh, historic importance as well. So on the map, there is uh, um, uh, um, um, a, a friendly place where uh, there is more um, tolerance. I, I, how to say tolerance in English? Uh, people are more uh, respected. Um, and uh, today, uh, tolerance is the same word. Tolerance, same. yeah. Okay, same thank word. you. Okay. Um, so this place, uh, the friendly place, is the only place in. It's just a few, a few streets where um, two men or two women can walk uh, and show signs of. Uh, they are a couple can uh, have their uh, can walk and, and show they are a couple and um, but in other places no it's not possible except the uh, the only day in the year is the the pride day where everything is possible and uh, but it's only one day uh, during the year so um, uh, so Charlie, uh, do you want me to 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 stop now, or shall I uh, continue, or do you want uh, how how can we how can you tell me what to do? But can I uh, can I just pose a quick question because you've talked about the Pride Days, the festival day, yeah, uh, and we we do have a sort of a one here in Plymouth. It's kind of a, it's a, a little bit um, covered over in a way, and it's not so um, 
Megan might correct me on this about the way it's presented and portrayed by the city council. But my question is, is do the city council, do Carl City um, promote and actually offer some form of funding for people who are uh, presenting and parading uh, during the Gay Pride Days? OK, um, so uh, the political uh, class is mainly um, uh, against uh, uh, LGBT people, except for six years, because it was a socialist uh, mayor uh, from, I think, 2001 to 2007, to 2007, yes, from for six years. And this socialist uh, socialist mayor had decided on the uh, Pride Day to put a flag, the rainbow flag, uh, on the city of Caen, the of the main building of the uh, of the city of Caen. And um, he did he did that for six six years. And when the following mayor was elected, he he gave back to um lgbt association the flag and he said uh, this is yours and uh, that was uh very different so it's uh, uh the support uh, has been historically for only six years hello uh, can you hear me Yes, okay. can hear you. Yeah. Can I ask a question related to that? Sure. Um, how how worried are you about people like Eric Zimmer? You know, he's got getting a lot of media attention. He clearly seems, you know, even more dangerous than Le, the Le Pens. Um, what's the feeling in amongst the LGBTQ plus? Um, community in Cannes and in other places in France, with someone like him potentially becoming president, even. Hmm. Um, of course, it's a big issue, and um, I think um, uh, many people can be against LGBT people uh, in theory. But when they realize they have a neighbor and uh, everything is okay with their neighbor, they can change their mind. And um, so, uh, of course, if we have a, a, a president like uh, Zemmour of, of, Le, of Le Pen, uh, they will reduce the rights of LGBT people and they will, they will, they will try to uh, do everything possible to reduce the this uh, the, the this um, LGBT people, and uh, it's a fear for LGBT people. Yes. Can, can I just, oh, sorry. No, do do go ahead. Yes, please. Can I just ask one kind of follow up question? It's kind of linked between practice and theory, really. Um, you 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 used the word territory earlier, territoire. I understand exactly what you mean, but I wonder, do you think that perhaps either um, Henri Lefebvre's ideas about social space, which most anthropologists, I'm an anthropologist, by the way, we would use rather use the word place, but I mean, Lefebvre's use of, um, you know, tripartite use of social space, as in, uh, what does he call it? Places of representation, places of practice, places, he's got these three versions, but I was thinking about, for example, with places of representation, like, when having the flag held up for six years over the town hall is really important and re a really powerful sign of solidarity. But I wonder if Lefebvre's ideas or otherwise ideas of place by people like Keith Basso, who works with indigenous people like the Western Apache, could be particularly useful in the way of, um, they, he draws upon kind of Bakunin's idea of um, chronotopes. So kind of places drawing together time and place, if you like, to, to mm. those mnemonic pegs, something. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, uh, I think uh, time. It's it's important to combine uh, time and space, and uh, Lefebvre uh, did that. And yeah. uh, we could use a social space uh, 
instead of territory. It's, uh, it's a debate between uh, geographers in France and um, now most geographers uh, would prefer using the, more, the word territory because um, when uh, geographers speak with uh, uh, people outside academic uh, public, they, um, they understand they can um, work uh, with mm -hmm. them or they can have a contract and they can uh, have a, um, a, a, a role in uh, deciding uh, what to do. And uh, so uh, territory is um, a scientific word, but I think it's also a political word. And uh, some geographer use it because they can uh, shift from uh, science to uh, politics. And uh, in that way, they can have a political uh, role uh, in uh, deciding uh, what to do in this city or in this uh, region. So it's, it's complicated. And, um, and I, I think I would use uh, social space, uh, um, it, uh, taking it into account that uh, it's important to combine space and time. And in this example, uh, um, the the history of, uh, of uh, the 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 spaces is is very important to understand uh, why the 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 main uh, um, uh, friendly uh, uh, space is um, exactly the same that uh, forty years ago in Caen. That's really interesting. Thanks so much. That's a really useful explanation. And I guess, um, yeah, by using that word territory so you can translate to non-academic audiences, you can embed ideas from place and social space within it as you choose, I guess. Would that be right or not? Uh, sorry, uh, can, can you say that again? I mean, if you choose to use the word territory for these political reasons that you outline, I guess, um, in any way, you can still incorporate ide Lefebvre's ideas about social space and Basso's ideas about chronotypes within that conceptualization of oh, yes. territory. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only problem I would imagine, but I'm probably, I could be easily be wrong, is that for me, territory kind of signals, um, uh, how do you say it, uh, exclusivity, you know? So it's kind of saying this is, LGBT plus only, whereas surely things are slightly more, um, you know, idea, uh, mixed, uh, like Metis, you know, there's a mixture of, I mean, I guess straight people also use these spaces too, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I, I definitely uh, agree with that. Um, uh, there are mixed places. I, I forgot to, to, to speak about that. And uh, I think after... Uh, to uh, the year uh, 2000, the mixed places were more and more important, and they were not LGBT uh, spaces. They were gen. They were just places where LGBT people and straight people were uh, uh, perfectly okay together, and there was no discrimination. And those places uh, existed. But before, uh, I think. Uh, 2000 and before uh, 1999, uh, where when the the law um, uh, voted the, the civil partnership, um, people were uh, uh, still hiding or half hiding, and um, and uh, and I agree that territory as uh, the, the meaning of exclusivity for LGBT people. And uh, that does not apply after, I think, the year uh, 2000. Thanks very much. Thanks. 
And, uh, can I, I'm, I know at the risk of staying on it for a little while, but it's it sparked off Ivan's question about Lefebvre's idea of the space lived, uh, le, l'espace vécu, I think he calls it. It, it. And it's made me think, I hadn't thought this before about your mapping, Jean-Marc, but are you mapping the, le- the leisure spaces of uh, particular subcultures or are you mapping the, the lived spaces? So are, are people's homes there? Are LGBT people's homes there? Or their workplaces are there? Or purely their leisure spaces? It interests me as a tourism person because we, as tourists, we look for tourism spaces and their spaces of leisure for a particular group of people who've arrived, say, on holiday, the holiday maker. They don't, they're not living there and they're going to enjoy that street or those two streets and that corner and those couple of restaurants. And so are the maps, the mapping that you've done with the map that you have on the screen now, are they LGBT leisure spaces rather than workplaces or rather than homes? Um, I would need to uh, make an investigation to check that. Right. Uh, because it's it's only a first w- work and uh, about LGBT people in in Cal- and it would it would uh, require uh, to uh, have a deep research to answer your question. But yes. uh, I can uh, say that um, um, well, the, the 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 map represents uh, leisure. Uh, places uh, only, not not the places where people uh, live on on our staying. Um, uh, I, I could say as well that the 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 center of the city is more uh, cosmopolitan, and there is more tolerance in the center. So uh, LGBT people that. Um, uh, are uh, living openly like uh, most uh, uh, people uh, now and especially young people, they will uh, um, try to live as as near uh, to have their home as near as possible as the the, the places where they are less uh, discriminated See, uh, in the periphery. It, it, social, uh, where we have a social housing, it would be very difficult, for example, for two women or two men uh, to, to, to be in a, in a public place and to kiss together. That would be just impossible. Yes. And it would be possible in, in the very center of Caen, uh, but uh, now uh, I think there is a class, um, explanation because living in the center is more expensive than living in the periphery. LGBT, uh, um, um, uh, let's say, uh, poor people uh, can't afford living in the center. So they will have to hide themselves uh, living in the periphery and they will join those uh, places uh, in, in the center of Caen. Um, and uh, rich people, uh, sorry, uh, I, I simplify uh, too yes, much, yes. but <laughs> it's just to communicate. And rich people uh, can afford uh, flats uh, uh, in the uh, friendly uh, spaces. And, and that's very different. So um, uh, thinking of LGBT uh, people, uh, it's important to think in class and uh, in the, um, uh, the, the, the incomes and as well in age. See, yes, yeah. That's really helpful, really useful. I, I, I feel like with uh, Ivan, uh, I've take, taken up all the question time, but let me throw it open. Does, does anyone else want to pose a question, either a spoken question or by chat? Please, please feel free, because I realise that we, we, we're we getting close towards the 45, 50 minutes that we, we try and limit these to. So any more questions, please? If no one's going to ask, I've got another one. 
I, I'm the same. I'd like to, too. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead then, Ivan, and I'll save mine up just if we've got a few minutes at the end. OK, well, um, Jean-Marc, you know, merci beaucoup. You know, it's a really great talk. Um, I think as well, in my own research, I work with indigenous people in Malaysia and I work a lot on on place as well. And as part of my research, I think it's really important because I work, the, for example, the people I work with have got these limestone casts um, in their, their landscape or territories made up of these places, really beautiful places, which are associated with mythological heroes, with history, with spirits and so forth. So one of my jobs as a kind of activist academic is to re um, put these back into the public imagination, you know, put down the geographical locations. So I see a real similarity between what you're doing here, the historical side and the contemporary yeah. side of mapping yeah. these places as a, as a kind of form of activism in itself to say, look, we're here, we exist. And, you know, this is where, you know, this, these are our places and our spaces. Do you think that's important too? And how could you do that in terms of a kind of in public uh, as a public acad academic? Um, yes, um, actually, uh, I, it, I give lectures uh, to uh, um, is a student in the geography, in history, in the sociology or in, and in economy. And I showed this map and, uh, and uh, explained uh, well, that was the, the, for the first time I, I, I did that. And uh, some students came after my lecture and said, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's very important uh, that at university we, um, we have this uh, topic. We are, um, I think, a peripheric university and gender studies here are very uh, limited, and uh, I think we are very late if we compare uh, uh, France uh, geography to uh, UK geography. We are, we are we are very very late. So uh, it's important in a peripheric university to uh, to have uh, uh, lectures and research about this topic because. Um, if we if we uh, uh, understand the world today and the rights of uh, um, uh, minority, not not only LGBT people but uh, uh, women's right, uh, it's important to uh, to um, to to play uh, 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 our academic uh, role uh, in in the society. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. I, I feel like it does, it does answer Ivan's question because you're uh, continually making this uh, map clear. But I also feel, well, if, to try and answer for you as well, is that is it the purpose of the Atlas Online for the Atlas of the City? Because th this map is is going to be permanently, could be permanently accessible so people could find it. And it, it almost enacts or signals those places to a, a huge, a much wider public. I'm always surprised by how many people go and find and view um, semi-academic and academic web pages once they've been made, uh, put onto the public web uh, without a password. So it's probably doing that work in that same way. I, I realise we've hit the 45 minutes uh, time now, and, and if people need to get away to go to other lectures, Please feel free, free, feel free to do that. John Mark, if you could stay with us about another five or ten minutes. I know you've got you've probably got to teach uh, on the hour as well. And I just wanted to um, say thank you, but then also pose one last question. Um, it's a particular area I'm interested in. And just by chance on the map there, it's covered up by the square that says Les Rives de Lorne. It's a white square uh, just above the legend, above the map legend. And if you look a little bit deeper, you can see the pink railway line um, drawing the line underneath that bank and then along and then the blue river, the river lawn, um, cut, cuts it off at the other side. And that particular space there for holiday makers, for tourists, 
that's their place of arrival. They will um, step out of the railway station, go under the a walkway, and and all the new hotels uh, and new restaurants have been built on that bank of the lawn. For you as a local, um, does that place still seem quite a void, quite a, a void? Quite is it quite empty, or does that have a, a history um, in that space? Uh, history of LGBT, please. Um, I understand on, uh, not everything, so I will try to um, to understand to to answer you, and if it's not okay. Uh, uh, ask me again. Okay. So, Les Rives de Lorne is um, a program uh, that has uh, 10 years now. It's, uh, there are uh, shops and um, flats and also um, private, uh, private business and also public uh, administration. And they were um, um, old industry and um, um, the, the, the objective was to uh, have a city with uh, higher densities. And the, yes. the other side of the Rives de Lorne, you have um, what we call uh, the Presqu'île, which is uh, um, industrial uh, um, spaces that are not anymore, and they rebuilt a uh, new uh, building, a very expensive building, luxury building, because it's between uh, the canal, uh, the canal, and between the river. So it's a, a, a front, uh, a waterfront, uh, a local uh, waterfront. And the, the new programs, uh, luxury new program with um, uh, flats uh, are in, the, in this, uh, in this uh, Presqu'île. And now the Presqu'île is supposed to have uh, 7,000 uh, inhabitants in the next uh, 20 mm -hmm. years. And the project to have a city between um, um, they, they, they want to have a city um, connected with the nature and connected with the sea and connected with uh, water and connected with boats and bikes. And that's a new city that uh, should uh, develop in the next 20 years. I see, yes. So it's not specifically; it's not just for tourism. One, it, it's for the for the uh, for the Canois, the people who, who are from Caen. Can sorry, not Caen. Caen. The, so it's for Caen people rather than for tourists. Yes, but there is um, uh, a, la a big, a very big library, and um, there is also a youth youth uh, hostel. Yes, and in project, and um, I think they will they will have uh, leisure uh, spaces, so tourists could uh, go there. I think. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Any final questions from anyone now, and then we'll um, we'll let people go to their next classes. Thanks, thanks very much. That, that's really been helpful. That's fantastic, Jean-Marc, I really enjoyed that. And it, I'm burning with lots of other ideas as well now and questions. And, I, and it's been really, really valuable, really useful to share that. It's, it's um, thank you too for being patient and, and staying in English for the whole session. That's <laughs> made, made it possible for us to keep up. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, and it, it's been a really good contribution to, uh, to our work and in getting our two labs, the JPN lab and the ESO lab, to start to collaborate and to think about each other's projects. So thanks very much. And uh, I'll, if, if the recording has worked OK, I'll send you a link to the recording. I'm quite hopeful that it has worked. So thanks very much then and bye-bye. Thanks, Jean-Marc. Thank, Thank you, Charlie.